my grandmother, bless her heart, she lived about 75 yards up the road from where I was raised. And we had real milk then. You know, the kind that came and she, she, she. It had cream on the top. Do you all know what I'm talking about? Every day when I'd get off the school bus, just a little old bitty toe-headed kid, I could run up to Granny's house. You ever been to Granny's house? I'd run up to Granny's house. Granny had a hair in a bun, and she always had time for me. She wasn't lost on some kind of Internet project. She had time to bake me sugar cookies. You ever had a sugar cookie? It's about the size of a hubcap. Oh, I don't know. It's just good. And it fills the whole room with a fragrance. And then she'd go to the icebox. I didn't say refrigerator. I said icebox. Remember when they used to have them? God'd come by with a block of ice and put it in the icebox. She'd go to the icebox and she'd get out some real milk. Stir it up and pour it in that glass. Now we got stuff they're buying. It looks just about like that. We used to throw that out to the cat. You know what I mean? But now they, you're paying more for less. Why, this is skimmed, fat-free, taste-free, you know. But Granny, bless her heart, she had never watched a Dr. Field program, but you couldn't pull the wool over her eyes. Woo, she's smart. She could tell if you was trying to hide something. Did I tell you when I killed her chicken? Let's talk about that a little bit. It's not super... Well, it is supernatural. Now, in Texas, where I was raised... They fed chickens with corn on the cob. Yeah. Now, come with me to Granny's house. Granny would feed her chickens with corn on the cob. She'd take the cob in her hand, and she'd shell the corn off out in the yard, and she'd go, here, chick, 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 chick. Little chicken, here they come. Can't you see them? Out of the woods, out of the woods. And she feeds the chickens with the corn off the cob. And then... She kept a bucket over here by the porch where she put the cobs and they soaked it with kerosene to start fire with. They cooked with wood and kerosene back then. So she'd keep a bucket full of corn cobs soaking in kerosene. Now here I am. Have you ever chunked a wet corn cob? You know in Australia you got boomerangs. Texas we got soaked corn cobs. So here I was. I was out there and you throw a corn cob and go... So, here's some chickens running. Can't you see them? So I thought, you know, I bet if I chunked in front of it, I could hit it. So here it came running like that. So I took my corn cob and I went, and it goes, and we had a Kairos moment. The connection of the chicken head and the corn cob. Down he went. I thought, oh my God. I've killed Granny's chicken. So this is all the truth. It's not preaching, but it's the truth. So I go over there, and there's a dead bird. It's a foul thing. There he is. So I pick him up, and I thought, I'm going to go hide him. Remember what the Bible says, Woe to him that tries to conceal his sin. He shall not prosper. So I took the chicken. Up from Granny's house is a fence row. You know what a fence row is. So up there I go about 100 yards. I kick me a shallow grave. And I put the dead chicken in there and I cover him up. So I'm going back down to Granny's house. Now, remember, I'm about like this. So I'm coming in the back door. You ever been to Granny's house? Back door of Granny's house, she had a screen door. So you got a, you, you got a burglar alarm. Granny had a squeaking screen door. That's me opening Granny's back door. There she is over there at the sink. She's washing dishes. And she always had on an apron, and she'd hum songs. She's wiping the dishes and wiping her hand. That's me trying to sneak back behind Granny, because I'm guilty. You know what I mean? Guilty. Have you ever tried to not act guilty, and Granny knows you're guilty? So she says, how are you, boy? I go, I'm fine. She turned around, dried her hands off, and said, what you done? See, no Dr. Phil, no psychology course. But she could read you. Boy, I just spilt my guts. I mean, she didn't have to interrogate me. What you done? I said, Girl, Granny, I didn't mean no harm, Granny. Ah, corn cob. Ah. I just spilled my guts. I figured Granny would have a fit. Guess what she said? 
She said, don't worry. Let's go get it. I'll clean it for dinner. Okay. I'm happy. Off we go up there to the fence room. I go to the shallow grave and bless God there's been a resurrection. <laughs> the grave's empty. I thought, Granny, he was here. And about that time you hear him. He's off down by the hog pasture. He's knocked out of his head. You know, he's going, Wah! anything's out of his head to get in the hog pasture. You don't ever go to the hog pasture. If you go in the hog pasture, you better have a club and some food. You throw the club, you throw the food and strike and get back out of the hog pasture. And that's where the chicken is. He's headed to the hog pasture. He's out of his mind, you know. And then Granny says, We gotta go get him. If we don't, the pigs will eat him. <sighs> Man, I'm scared of the hog pasture. Boy, there ought to be some music. Give me some scary music. Yeah! I mean, when you get to the hog pasture. There ought to be a chill up your spine. Good, good God. Yeah. My grandpa had a chain around the gate. You know why? Kids not supposed to get in there. That Them hogs will eat you. We intend to eat them. They'll eat you first. Oh, okay, Granny says, we're going after you. There it is, that chicken. In the hog pasture. So Granny... Did I tell you Granny was around 82 pounds? She undone that chain. She said, come on, let's get him. I thought, Granny, them hogs will get both of us. But I found out something about Granny then. She was fearless. In there she went. She chased down that crippled chicken. <coughs> grabbed it. <coughs> sent it to heaven. <laughs> yep. See, what I thought was going to be bad turned out good. See, God's better than Granny. You're running from God trying to cover your sins and all God's trying to do is set a table before you. You see how good He is? He's better to us than Granny. That's the God we serve. He's a good, good God. My favorite verse in the whole Bible right now is Nahum, N-A-H-U-M, chapter 1, verse 7. It says God is good. Didn't say He was or He's going to be. Right now, He's good. Right now, when your heart's broken, things are shattered, He's good. And He's the very present help in the time of trouble. I'll tell you about the Lord's help. It's adequate and available. There's a verse in the Bible. If it wasn't in the Bible, you'd never make me believe it. Here's what it says, Zechariah 3, 7. I will give you open access to my presence. Open access. This is God's throne. We can come unfettered in His presence. Through the blood of Jesus. Isn't that something? Pretty amazing. There's not one of us can go out here and call the White House and speak to Obama. You know why? Not enough clout. I don't care who you are. You, you can't walk out there and pick up the phone and talk to the president. Not enough clout. But any one of us can fall on our face right here and talk to Almighty God. That's access. Open access. Day or night. Psalms 121, verse 1 said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He that keepeth thee will not slumber nor sleep. You won't get a hold of an answering machine. You call out to God, He's there, isn't He? Yes, sir. Well, that was good. Thanks for the scary music. <laughs>